Thank you, dear. That was a very beautiful song. Amen. I appreciate it. And just want to say happy Sabbath to everybody. Sabbath. Say happy Sabbath to our Zoom congregation. And happy Sabbath to our Facebook congregation as well. So before we begin, let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this beautiful yet chilly Sabbath that you have given in us today. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and bless us. Lord, use my lips as your vessel to present to your congregation the words that you would have them hear this morning that would touch their hearts, not just as a church, but as individuals, Father. And I ask you all this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Man, first off, I want to start with the book of Daniel in chapter 12, as Jim has read just moments ago. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, we will look at verses 1 and 2. I believe we are all there already. So the Word of God says, And at that time shall Michael stand up. Who's Michael? Jesus. Michael is Jesus. So at that time Michael shall stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. What book is it talking about? Everyone that shall be found written in the book of life, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So we see a scene here as Jesus coming to deliver his people. But before his people are delivered, there shall be a great tribulation that we are all going to have to endure. Amen. Some Christians out there like to think there's a, there's a secret rapture and they're all just going to be saved before the tribulation. But that's not what the Bible teaches, friends. It says we are to grow, go through this tribulation before He comes to deliver His people. In fact, if you look through history, in the book of Daniel, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace, did God zap them out of that furnace, or was Jesus in there with them? Jesus was there. And another example, just a few chapters later, when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, did God zap him out of the lion's den? Jesus was there with them. Amen. He shut the mouth of the lion. Amen. So we are, to grow, we are to go through this great tribulation before He delivers His people. Listen, God doesn't say it's going to be easy. However, He did say, For he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. We need to endure. We need to overcome. Have faith that Jesus is going to protect us, right? Amen. Go to the book of Matthew in chapter 24. Matthew in chapter 24, we will look at verses 21 and 22. Are you all there with me? Amen. Who is speaking here? Jesus, Jesus is. Matthew chapter 24, verses 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Listen, we, look, we lived, well, we didn't live, but in history, this world had a worldwide flood. And it's going to be worse than that. Verse 22, And ex except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. At this time it is going to be so bad that if Jesus let it go on anymore, 
everybody's going to die. But just when God's people are about to be destroyed, or they think they're about to be destroyed, you see a black cloud coming from the sky, the size of a man's hand, and Jesus is coming to deliver His people, right? Amen. Once again, we see here that we have to go through this tribulation before Jesus comes to deliver His people. So I'm going to want, I am going to look more into this tribulation before we get to the deliverance as we move along here stay in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and we're going to look at verses 6 through 8 and who is speaking here? Jesus is speaking here and he says and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Then it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Are we seeing wars going on right now? Are we seeing famines? Are we seeing pestilences? And earthquakes in diverse places. But... Brother John, we've always had these things, right? Of course we've always had these things. But listen, they're happening more frequently in these last days than they ever have. And then it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. And the last days began back in 1844. So, these sorrows have been going on for a long time now. How much closer to the end are we? Got to be coming close, right? Go to the book of Luke in chapter 17. The book of Luke in chapter 17 Verses 26 through 29. Are you all there with me? And it says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sowed, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. So let me ask you a couple questions. How many people were saved from Sodom and Gomorrah? There should have been four, but there was three. Which just goes to show you, when you get out of the world, make sure you, the world is not in your heart. How many people were saved in the days of Noah? Only eight. And everybody else perished. Because they would not heed the warning that God has sent. And listen, at the days of Lot, if Lot waited any longer, he would have been destroyed. So God gives us a little, little slither of time right there at the end for us to get our hearts right and get out of the world. But probation is going to be closing very soon. And the world is going to be destroyed. So, how were all these people acting? They were drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, partying, having a good time. Have put God on the back burner. Didn't care about God at all. 
Let's go to the book of Genesis in chapter 6. Genesis and chapter 6. And we will look at verse 5. Are you all there with me? The Word of God said, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. Are we seeing that right now in these last days? Every imagination of the hearts are nothing but evil continually across the world. Around the globe, brothers and sisters. See, a wise man once said, there was nothing new under the sun. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in these last days, right? And all these people going around, partying, having a good time. They have no love for God, no love for the Creator. Listen, Jesus even says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. They throw the law of God away. And because of that, they have no love for anybody, right? Listen, they don't have any love for the Creator. The most advanced machine created from just a tiny cell in our bodies. So many of them believe they had no Creator. But Ellen White says in Life Sketches, in page 96, verse 1, if the true Sabbath had been kept, there would have never been an infidel or an atheist. How true is that? See, God created us, brothers and sisters, and we need to give all honor and glory to Him. Go to the book of 2 Timothy. The book of 2 Timothy in chapter 3. We will look at verses 1 through 5. And the word of God says, This know also that in the last days wonderful times shall come. The last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, in these last days, it won't just be atheists and infidels who are destroyed, but a lot of them profess the name of Christ. Because they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. They deny the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, because they want to do their own things. They don't want to give up their alcohol. They don't want to give up their smoking. They want to believe what they want to believe. So God shall send them, send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. There's only one truth, brothers and sisters, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. That truth is found right here in the Word of God, right? Amen. Go to the book of Romans in chapter 1. The book of Romans in chapter 1, we will start with verse 22.
and it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. It seems like every time I read that verse 22, it reminds me of the Titanic. They said, oh, this ship is unsinkable. Even God can't sink this ship. They had to learn the hard way. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Listen, eventually God's going to give you what you want. But you're going to reap the consequences. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving their natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do these things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And when I read verses like this, I hear, you can't judge them. They can do whatever they want. Friends, that's not love. Love is telling them, hey, God loves you. You need to stop doing that. If you have a friend and they're about to jump off a bridge, what are you going to do? Are you going to say, hey, don't do that. You're going to die. Or do you say, they can do what they want. I can't judge them. No. You have to stop them, brothers and sisters. You have to let them know what they're doing is wrong. Listen, if we keep living in sin, then we're going to perish. So we need to stop them from jumping off that spiritual bridge, right? Because it says, Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. See, if you say, Go ahead, jump off a bridge. I love you anyway, right? You're going to face the same fate. The blood is on your hands. It's our job to say something to them, right? We can't stop them from jumping off a bridge. But we have to warn them. Go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. Ezekiel, chapter 33. And we will look at verses 3 through 9. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, 
He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Friends, we need to go out and warn the people that Jesus is coming again. Amen. We need to be watchmen. We need to warn the people that Jesus is coming again and that there was a God in heaven which loved them and want to save them Amen. from this sin. Amen. He doesn't want to see them perish. Be like Paul Revere. Ride your horse into town say, the British are coming, the British are coming. Look, we need to tell them Jesus is coming. Amen. Jesus is coming. Yeah. See, if Paul Revere didn't do that, more people probably would have died. If Christians just keep their mouths shut and don't warn the people, more people are going to die. Because if we don't speak out, the rocks will speak out. So we have to let people know and, get, and help them get ready and prepare them for God's kingdom because He is coming soon, right? Go to the book of 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5. First Thessalonians in chapter 5. And we're going to look at 2 through 6. Is everybody there with me? Okay. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that, that they sh should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Listen, we're all children of light, right? Amen. We know Jesus is coming again. Yes. And we know He is coming very soon. Amen. So we need to be awake and be watching. Amen. And we need to tell everybody else to be awake too. Because we know Jesus is coming. And to those who, are, who continually live in darkness, He will come unto them as a thief in the night. But He won't come to us as a thief in the night because we know He's coming, right? Go to the book of 2 Thessalonians in chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I am wanting to look at verses 3 and 4. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except their coming falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Jump down to verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish,
because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The people need to know the truth. We are to tell the people the absolute truth of the Word of God. We can't sit back thinking somebody else is going to do it for us. No, we got to go out there and do it too. Now, I know we all have a bunch of trials and tribulations we're going through ourselves, right? We've all seen what happened these last few years. Some of us lost jobs, some of us lost homes, and everything. Because of what they do in the government. Listen, brothers and sisters. We might lose all these things, but we still have our salvation, right? We still have Jesus, right? Listen, what they do in the government is their business. It's always been like this. But God's kingdom isn't like that. Amen. You see, we need to be Christian enough to forgive these people their transgressions against us, right? We could talk about we hate all these politicians all we want, but what good does it do? It does nothing. It just makes us bitter. It just makes us angry. We need to pray for them. We need to let them know that there is a God in heaven who loves them just as much as he loves us. Because God loves them too, right? Let's not be bitter and angry against people, friends. We need to tell them the truth. Now what they do after that is their business. It won't fall on us anymore after that. Go to the book of Matthew in chapter 24. The book of Matthew in chapter 24, and we will look at verses 29 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great, great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Notice this is after the tribulation of these days. Then Jesus will come and send his angels to gather us up from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. But notice we're also starting to see a cycle here too. It says those who are wicked are going to mourn. They're going to be destroyed by the brightness of His coming, right? Amen. So go to the book of Revelation, chapter 6. Revelation and chapter 6. And we will look at 12 through 17. The Word of God says, And I beheld, when He had opened the sixth seal... And lo, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell upon the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, 
and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? See these people out here acting all haughty, acting all mighty, thinking they got it all together. Doesn't matter how much money you got. If you reject Christ, He's going to take you down too. Listen, God says He raises up kings and He taketh, he taketh them down. Nobody can stand against God. He is the ultimate king. He is the king of the universe. Forget being a king of a country. I bow only to one king. That's the king of the universe, friends. Because these other leaders, these other kings, they're not going to protect me. There's only one king worth bowing to, brothers and sisters. You saw what he did to Nebuchadnezzar. Had him running around like a wild beast for seven years. I mean, if, he, if God has to do that to you to get your attention, then so be it, you know. Yeah. That's how much God loves you. Yes. Go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, we will look at 16 through 18. Some of my favorite verses says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Friends, Jesus is coming soon. Amen. You know, I, I just can't say that enough. I mean, Jesus is coming soon. I've only said it about 50 times through this whole sermon. Because He is, right? We need to be shouting out to the world, right? But Jesus is coming again to deliver His people from all the wickedness that is going on this earth. And all this sin and all this wickedness will be destroyed forever. Amen. There won't be a sequel, brothers and sisters. It's the end. This isn't a movie. This is reality. Amen. Once it's gone, it's gone. There will be nothing but perfect peace and happiness and perfect love for all of eternity. Amen. Brothers and sisters, just knowing this should make us the happiest people on the face of the world. Amen. Forget all this misery. I'm tired of it. In fact, Jesus says in Luke 21, 28, when all these things begin to come to pass, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. So the question is, are we going to keep looking at all these crazy things going on in the world? Or are we going to look up? Are we going to look heavenward? Are we going to look to Jesus? For we know He's coming back again. We need to overcome. Amen. Jesus is there with us if we have faith in Him. We need to be happy. Let me see some smiling faces out there. Come on, we know Jesus is coming back. Amen. Stop being morose. Stop being sad and angry all the time. I mean, I got my problems too, but come on. Amen. I know Jesus is coming again. And never forget that. Pretty soon we're going to see it happen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to be here on this Holy Sabbath. Lord, we, we ask that you prepare us for your kingdom. For we, are, we know you are coming again very soon. Lord, and we ask you this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.